everyone, how's it going? So this video is going to be a quick one. I'm, I want to show you uh, the shortcuts that I use the most with Affinity Designer. Uh, so the first one we have here, Convert to Curves. Uh, I use that whenever I, I draw something with one of the primitives here, like a rectangle, ellipse, or round rectangle, and so on. And I, I want to edit them later, because if you draw a, uh, a rectangle here, for instance, you can't use the node tool to, to move the nodes and so forth. You have to uh, convert it to curves first, so you just press Ctrl Enter, and use the node tool, and you can manipulate it however you want. So that goes for the rectangle, the ellipse as well. Uh, I, I can't edit the nodes. I press Ctrl Enter, I can move them freely and create any shape I like. This can also be used for text. So if I have uh, some text here, you can press Ctrl Enter going to turn itself into a group. If I ungroup it, I can move and edit all the letters independently. Next one, lock layer. Let's suppose you have a, a bunch of objects. Like so. Sometimes I have my illustrations here and uh, uh, I put uh, a transparent object on top of it. Somewhat like that. And I want to select the objects behind them and I can't. I could just lock the layer by clicking the pet lock icon here. Or I could just press Ctrl L and then I just move the objects behind it. It's pretty simple. Next one, finding layers panel. So let's suppose you have uh, thousands of objects here. That depends on the complexity of your illustration. That happens to me a lot. So let's suppose you have a, a very complex illustration here with hundreds or maybe even thousands of layers and objects. And you want to, to, to find a specific object inside the layers panel. Like uh, I'm working with this object here. And for whatever reason, it's not being shown here in the, on the layers panel. I don't know why that happens sometimes, but sometimes that they get lost, they, they don't get highlighted there on the layers panel. So what you can do is just, just select the object and press Ctrl K and it's going to scroll right to that object on the layers panel. Now this is one of my favorite shortcuts ever, ever. I'm going to tell you why. So I have this green rectangle here and uh, I have this reddish circle here. I, if I want to clip this guy to, to go inside the, the rectangle, I just cut it and paste it with Ctrl Alt V. See? It's clipped by the rectangle. I use this all the time for shading my characters, like for instance, uh, I have this greenish, blue, bluish circle here, and there, there's light coming down from this side, so this is where the shadow is going to be, so I just, using the pen tool, I draw the shape of the shadow pick a color for it, choose a darker shade, shift the hue a bit, and I cut it 
and I paste it inside the circle. So here you have a shadow, like cell shaded shadow. And then if I double click it, I select the objects inside the shape and I can add whatever effect I want. Pretty nifty. And here's another one of my favorite shortcuts, which is called Paste Attributes. So I have this very boring square here. I could just, if I wanted to uh, apply a, a, an attribute from another object onto it, I would just go to that object, like I have, for instance, the, the shadow that we, we created earlier. I copy it, Control C. I select this guy here and press Control Shift V. It's going to paste all the attributes from that object we copied before. Its color and its blur effect. It also works with text. So I have here some random text. It has a bluish color. And let's add a red outline to it. And here we have a boring text. It's nothing at all. Boring text. So I can just copy it and base attributes. Control, sh Control Shift V. There you go. They're not boring anymore, though they're very ugly. But that's okay for the sake of the tutorial. All right. So here's how I arrange my layers. I very rarely use the layers panel. It's a bit distracting. I want to focus on my art, so I, I'm, I'm always trying to use shortcuts as much as I can. So here's what I do. I want this blue circle to go behind the red triangle. So I press Control left bracket. I want to bring it forward. Control right bracket. If I add the Shift key, you're going to send it all the way to the back or bring it all the way to the front. So control shift left bracket goes all the way to the back. And with the right bracket, you'll bring it forward. But sometimes if you have hundreds of layers, like let's say, well, not really hundreds here, but you'll get the point. I want this, this guy to go behind the blue triangle. So I can press Ctrl left bracket until it goes behind the triangle. But if you have hundreds of layers, it's going to be a chore. So what, what I usually do, I simply cut the object I want to move. I click on the object I want it to be placed up, uh, on top of, and I paste it back. It's going to be pasted right on top of the object that I selected before. This one's also pretty simple but very useful. If I want to deselect an object, what I usually do is just click outside. Okay, I have the select selection tool. And I, I just click outside the object. But sometimes your illustration is, is so complex it, it it actually covers all of your screen. Like some somewhat like this. And you want to deselect the object, you simply press Ctrl D. No brainer. Swap stroke and fill. Let me copy this guy here. So here you have a yellow circle. He doesn't have any strokes at all. Let me add a stroke to it, like a black stroke. Let me make, let me make it thicker so you can see it better. Okay. So you just press Shift X. It swaps strokes with the fill. If there's no stroke at all, just a fill, it's going to be just a stroke if you press Shift X. Pretty simple. Oh, 
another one that's very useful. I want to select this blue circle here. You can just click on it, right? But what if your illustration is so busy that you, you can't actually select it? So you have to keep scrolling on the layers panel and it's, it's pretty annoying. So what you can actually do with the selection tool, select it. And you, you just hold out and click. It's going to select the object right below the one you were select, selecting before. And you can go on and on, so you can just keep on holding out and clicking. Out and click it. See? Pretty simple. And this one is for when you want to group your objects. So let me copy these guys here. Right. So I want to make a group. These guys here. Ctrl G. Nothing new there. Ctrl Shift G to ungroup it. And I use groups all the time for for using the transparency tool as a workaround. Because let's say you want to fade this triangle like so. So you use the transparency tool the glass tool here and press Y for its shortcut and you just drag it around okay but you you want you want it to fade from both sides so you want it to fade the fade the transparency to go to this side as well what you can actually do you just add nodes and you can control its opacity independently but it's it's kind of tedious it's not that difficult to do but with the workaround that I use it's much faster so what I do is okay I use the transparency tool here If I use the transparency tool again, it's just going to replace the one I just did. So the workaround is I, I group the object, then I use the transparency tool again. I can do that as many times as I want. I can group it again and fade it here, group it again, fade it here. Group these guys. Fade them out here, group again, and so on. I can even group the groups that are grouped and add transparency to them. It's pretty useful for uh, creating complex images. So those are my most used Affinity Designer shortcuts. I hope you find them useful and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon, and all that jazz. Alright, so I'll see you around. Take care. Cheers.